Hello, and welcome to our first build guide for the Affliction Lee. Lightning Trap is a simple skill, it fires a few projectiles in all directions that deal lightning damage. The optional projectile return, or the transfigured variant of the sparking, not only makes the clear speed even better, but it also boosts your single target damage, as it can hit the boss again. The Lightning Trap has a very high inherited critical strike chance and added damage effectiveness, which are very important factors in scaling your damage. Sources of trap throwing speed are rather limited, but you can use the charged trap support and frenzy charges to boost it. The Assassin Ascendancy is very powerful for this build. It easily caps your critical strike chance with the first hit or when the enemy drops below 50% maximum life, which is quite handy at boss encounters as you can preload all your traps to hit at once at first. The last phase is usually the hardest, so extra damage is useful there too. After the rework, the Saboteur Ascendancy provides nothing interesting for non-cooldown traps. The Trickster can be great for energy shield-based characters. Such builds usually have more survivability but would be much more expensive to reach similar amounts of damage as Assassin. The Transfigured Lightning Trap has higher base damage and damage effectiveness, always pierces, and can chain from the walls if enemies are close enough. It has less projectiles and no longer fires them in a nova, but with three traps thrown at once you can barely see the difference. This build utilizes high maximum life, evasion rating, capped spell suppression, rapid life regeneration, massive physical damage reduction from the lightning coil armor, and delayed damage from petrified blood. You will have great area coverage with massive amounts of projectiles, and very fast mobility. The single target damage is very good, and it's easy to make your traps hit the same target two times. This version of the build is a league starter, it consists of cheap items and it's life-based. Most gear can be cheaply crafted using simple essences. There are no mandatory uniques for this build functionality, but some are very useful to have. It is especially true for the Lightning Coil and Ancestral Vision which are universally powerful defensive items for any build that can afford to wear them without losing too much damage. Lightning Coil is the best armor to reduce physical damage you take. You will need plenty of lightning resistances to cover the penalty, but it is worth it. Look for corrupted ones with bonuses to trap or projectile gem levels and link it using the Tainted Currency. Badge of the Brotherhood is an easy way to obtain two additional Frenzy Charges and save four passive point skills. It is stronger than a regular rare amulet but provides nothing defensively. With this amulet you will want to anoint an additional power charge. Replica Dragonfang's Flight grants tons of damage via three additional gem levels for your Lightning Trap and improves your Mana Reservation efficiency, resistances, and attribute requirements a bit. You will need to invest in two Frenzy Charge Notables to make up for the lack of Badge of the Brotherhood and anoint the Savagery for the third Frenzy Charge. With this ring you will automatically apply a high-level curse via your trigger bots. The traps can't use the curse on hit modifiers to automate the curse application otherwise, and the lack of shock from your trigger bots is not a problem since your lightning trap is stronger anyway. As with every other projectile skill, this ring will double your damage if you have no other source of returning projectiles, making it extremely good. It is very expensive, so you should look into alternative sources first, such as returning projectile support. With proper boots and investments into spell suppression you can become fully immune to elemental ailments thanks to this jewel. It is quite expensive, so make sure you will reach the full immunity before you spend your budget on this jewel. This ring blocks pierce but adds an additional chain. It can be optionally used to alter the behavior of the transfigured lightning trap of the spark, which normally can only chain after colliding with terrain. Those gloves can be used to alter the build a lot. With them, you don't need to worry about trap throwing speed or eldritch battery, but you will have to invest a lot into cast speed and life regeneration. It is an option worth mentioning, but not that good in this setup. The Watcher's Eye is a high-end expensive jewel. You can find a lot of mods that increase the effectiveness of auras, the ones you're interested in are Wrath and Grace. To boost your damage you should look for modifiers that grant you additional gem levels or increase your elemental, spell, or lightning damage. 
Trap throwing speed and critical strike multiplier are also very important. To boost your defense, look for maximum life, capping your elemental resistances, and a bit of spell suppression. Life regeneration is also useful to have. Use the energy shield bases for your armor so you can freely use your skills, but a few pieces with evasion rating to enable spell suppression are also good. Here you should look for additional gem levels, spell damage, or critical strike multiplier and added lightning damage to your spells. Buy the wand, scepter, or rune dagger with fractured gem levels modifier and use essence of woe or torment until you get the other two modifiers. On your shield, you can find plenty of damage bonuses too, but you should look mostly for defensive boosts. Additional block chance can also be quite useful, but it's not very effective for this build. Only pure energy shield bases can roll additional gem levels, but you can craft a bit of spell suppression on any base type. On your rare helmet, you can opt for lots of mana reservation efficiency if you want to fit in the arctic armor aura. If that's irrelevant for you, just look for high maximum life, resistances, attributes, spell suppression, and energy shield. Seek a lot of elemental resistances, maximum life, and movement speed. Attributes or chaos resistances are also very good to have. Try to get at least 50% elemental ailment avoidances here, but it will be quite tricky at first. The gloves have a wide variety of useful modifiers. You can use them to get basic defenses such as maximum life, resistances, or life regeneration, but it can have some damage modifiers too. The Eldritch Implicits are also very important. On your belt you should look for tons of resistances, life and its regeneration, and attributes. Use the Stygian Vice for additional Abyss Jewel. You can get a bit of generic damage or trap throwing speed from your crafting bench. On your extra abyss jewel inside of your belt you can obtain additional maximum life, lacking resistances or attributes, and some critical strike multiplier. You can also buy one with a corrupted implicit to gain immunity against corrupting blood. At first you can use just a regular rare amulet with bonuses to your maximum life, resistances, and possibly gem levels. You should not use it for too long, as the unique options are way superior. Here you should look for life and lacking attributes or resistances. If you want damage, you should try to get increased lightning damage or critical strike multiplier with essences. It is also a good place to look for chaos resistances. Jewels offer a wide variety of stats. Having a 7% increased maximum life is one of the best mods, but you can also seek some spell damage and critical strike multiplier in there. You can get a bit of mana reservation efficiency if you lack just a few percent to use another aura, but it can be quite expensive if you want to pair it with other good modifiers. This flask further improves your physical damage taken reduction by converting part of it into cold damage instead. It also lowers all cold damage taken, and makes it easier to fully avoid freeze and chill. For the remaining magic flasks we recommend using, a Quartz Flask with Reduced Mana Cost of Skills Bonus Jade Flask with Evasion Rating Bonus Life Flask with Bleeding Removal And the Quicksilver Flask with Movement Speed Bonus It is the core element of the build, it is a trap that shoots out lightning projectiles when triggered by an enemy standing on it. The Transfigured variant of the Sparks hits harder, but the additional chains from the terrain are impossible to utilize against most bosses. The charged trap support greatly improves your trap throwing speed, which is very important for smooth gameplay. You can replace the trap and mine damage support with returning projectile support, which will reduce the initial hit but improve your overall DPS. The skitterbots grant you more trap damage, but also inflict shock and chill. With the profane proxy ring, they apply a curse of your choice instead. Grace is the main source of evasion rating in this build, it allowing you to evade most incoming attacks. The petrified blood delays part of the incoming damage, but makes you more susceptible to damage over time effects. It also enables the low life status for 30% more spell damage. Arctic armor reduces the physical damage you take while throwing traps, and makes you immune to freeze. Skip it if you lack investments in mana reservation efficiency. Thanks to the Eldritch Battery Keystone you can reserve 100% of your total mana. 
There is no need for the enlightened support if you have enough mana reservation efficiency in your helmet. Vitality grants you tons of life regeneration, which is the main way of life recovery in this build, since you have no access to life leech. Precision grants a bit of critical strike chance. You can also use the Defiance banner instead to improve your evasion rating further. Those auras can be linked with the Arrogance to reserve your maximum life instead of mana. You can freely reserve up to 50% of your maximum life thanks to the Petrified Blood mechanics. Wrath greatly improves your damage with Lightning Spells. It also has useful modifiers on the Watcher's Eye Jewel. If you lack Energy Shield on your gear, you can use the Discipline Aura which will be enough to freely spam your traps on boss encounters. Use the Divine Blessing to turn this permanent aura into a temporary buff. It will require lots of energy shield to cast it, but you can reduce that cost, for example with the Inspiration support. Shield Charge is the best movement skill to use for clearing maps. It is a fast charge toward the targeted location, with no cooldown. This skill greatly scales with your movement and attack speed. Additional quality on both those gems will improve your mobility even further. Steel Skin is your main guard skill that lowers incoming damage you take and makes you immune to bleeding. Frost Shield places a frosty globe that drains your energy shield up to a limit, and significantly reduces the damage you take from outside sources if you are standing inside of it. Conductivity is a powerful curse that reduces enemy lightning resistance and improves your shock. You can automate it with the Profane Proxy Ring. After you pick up the Whispers of Doom Notable you can use a second curse. The Sniper Mark is the best choice as it significantly improves your damage with projectiles. Frost Blink is a secondary movement skill that you can occasionally use to instantly dodge incoming attacks or cross the terrain gap. Bear Trap greatly slows enemy movement speed and makes it take more damage from your Lightning Trap for a few seconds. It is recommended to kill all bandits in the second act to get two bonus passive tree skill points. You can help the Alira at first to ease your gearing process. For your major pantheon power you should grab the soul of Arakali. It will reduce the damage you take from damage over time effects, which is the most lethal type for this build. The minor pantheon power is even more flexible, but the soul of Shikari is usually the most helpful, as the chaos resistances are often uncapped. You can easily level up using the Lightning Trap right from the start. It will feel a bit slow at first, but as you gain more trap throwing speed, and more of them thrown at once, it will be much smoother. On the passive tree, you will pick up many useful trap related notables. Traps can't be damaged for 2 seconds after being thrown, so you don't have to worry about losing all your damage in chaotic battles. Both power and frenzy charges are very valuable for this build but only if you use the Charged Trap support. The Passive Tree offers a lot of spell suppression chance, so you don't need it that much on your gear. In exchange, you will need plenty of the maximum life bonuses there. You don't need the Pierce Notables if you use the Transfigured Lightning Trap gem. The traps used to be the main theme of the Saboteur's Ascendancy, but after the rework it is not that good for this archetype anymore. With just a few points allocated on the passive tree you will have a very big trigger area of your traps, so you don't need the saboteur's chain reaction notable. You could use some cluster jewels for this build, but you would have to cut out some defensive passives for that, so it is usually not worth it. That's all for today's video, we hope you found it fun and informative. If you want to see more of our videos, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. Have a good day, and see you in the next video.